Welcome back to the lab folks. So I know I promised to continue on the power supply on this video, but I'm getting in some more powerful transistors from DigiKey. So I'm going to wait for them to come in. I know that I could probably get complete what I wanted to do by following a slightly different methodology. But because these TIP 3055s are not capable of handling the full envelope of this power supply, a small mistake will have a similar problem and one of them will go up in smoke. So I'm getting in a different transistor in a bigger package, a TO264, a transistor with a higher wattage capability. And because it's in the TO264 package, it'll be able to transfer heat to the heat sink a lot better. So it'll be less thermal resistance and less chance of us repeating what we did in the last video. So in the meantime, I have what's in this box. Now I spoke about these a little while back in one of my mailbag videos. Um, there, were, there were six items at that time, which I didn't want to open up and tell you about. But I'm going to open them up and tell you about them today. And there's an, an additional one. There's seven total now. And what these are, these are little SMD tweezer meters. So we're going to do a shootout between them. All of these here are under $25 US, so they're all pretty inexpensive. And we're going to just look at them today. Just introduce you to the contestants here. And then I'm going to do a spreadsheet. This is just the start of it here. I'm going to do a spreadsheet with all the different features and stuff that we need to look at. And we're going to rate each one. And I got all of these off of AliExpress. I got them thanks to my viewers who have taken my AliExpress link and gone in and bought stuff. So I got some bonus bucks. I decided then I'll get these and uh, show you guys a little shootout here. So let's get started with this. So let's start off here with the UNI-T. This is the UT-116C. I think it's a little bit better than the 116A, but not much. This one here was uh, $24.50 in US currency. And that's on the date that I bought it. So any of the prices I give you now will be on the date that I bought them. <clears throat> All right, the instruction sheet is uh, very limited. Uh, we can tell from this table the sorts of uh, things we can measure for the most part. Uh, but I can't read any instructions because they're all in Chinese. It would have been handy if they had supplied, uh, you know, an English sheet as well or a couple of other languages. But uh, maybe we should make that one of the decisions on, on the spreadsheet there. Okay, it comes with a set of cables, which is uh, really unusual for a freezer meter. Okay, so I get here. All right, this one takes batteries, so it doesn't have a battery built in. Open up like this. There's the tweezer. Does it rotate? It does. It does rotate. That's handy. The tweezer is very stiff. That's a lot of force you have to put on this to get that to work. It comes with a spare set of clips, but they're not a different style. They're exactly the same style. And they attach to this. I guess this ends up being a kind of a case for it. That's okay, but there's no way to store the, the leads. And I'm not sure how these leads actually work. They would clip in here. Well, that's just awful. That, 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 that is, they don't hold in there very tight at all. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments whether you think this is a, a viable accessory here. Okay. No backlight. Got a rel mode, but it doesn't seem to activate. Maybe it needs to be measuring something. And you can select the different modes if you want. You have to select this switch here. That'll put it up into LED and Zener diode testing mode. And this here, I guess it can test uh, small voltages. That is the UNI-T. Now it doesn't look like there's any way to turn it off. And uh, unless they've got that set right, it could either be an annoyance or it could use up a lot of your battery. Who knows? Okay, this one here is the Zoe ZT-MD1. There's another one here I have that looks very, very similar to it. It may have just been a rebadged item. And, oh, this one comes with a nice little case. That's good. That's always a plus. This one comes with a USB-C cable. So this one must have a built-in battery. It comes with a, an extra pair of clips. They're not different shapes, they're the same shape, or maybe the ones on it are curved. Let's pull it out to have a look. 
No, so the same, basically the same clips that are on it, but it's nice to get a spare. And uh, this one's, uh, yeah, this one's rechargeable. Let's see the instructions. Do the instructions have English? Yes, they do. They have English only in this case. Now, see if it turns on. Is enough power to turn it on? Yes, there is. Go through different ranges there. And over here, hold for auto. It doesn't need a backlight. This one looks uh, kind of promising. So I would say, you know, it would get uh, higher points for storage than the Uni T. It would also get higher points for having a built in battery. I like that for something like this. And uh, the tweezer seems a little bit less, quite a bit less force actually to use. Uh, but it does not have the rotating clip. So if you're, if you're trying to get something that's uh, pointing the device away from you, you can't read it. So that's a little bit of a drawback to this one. But it does have the fact that you can actually turn it on and off. That's nice as well. Now feel free to put down in the comments if there's uh, things that you'd like me to check. I'm mentioning some of the things I want to check, including of course accuracy. I'm not going to go too much into that. We'll just measure a few little items in their capability range. I am sure that these things are going to be fairly accurate unless it's a real dog and we'll see that right away. I'd say this is the leader so far, but uh, we've got a lot more to look at. This is the next one here. This is a Snackall SKBD1. And this is the one that looks almost identical to the Zoe. So let's have a, a look inside. A little bit nicer packaging, although that doesn't really mean anything. It's got the same case. Nice little case. And yeah, it, it does seem to be a duplicate. However, the instructions here are in Chinese only. But it has exactly the same accessories, the USB cable points and the device itself and it's got exactly the same controls on it and they work in exactly the same way except for it comes up snack all yeah it's an identical display so i would expect uh, this to have exactly the same overall performance as the zoe except for the fact that it's going to get doctor point for not having english on the manual okay here's the next contestant this is a mastech ms8910 Oh, by the way, the, the Zoe was 2390 US, the Snack All was 2350 US, so again, the price is very much the same. And this Mass Tech here is $17.20. So, this is the cheapest one so far by a considerable margin. Comes in this plastic case here, not quite as nice as the soft ones. And it's got an English manual. This one does not have a built in battery, the batteries have to be put into it and it requires a screwdriver to put the batteries in. The spare tips are of a different profile. These ones have got a little V cut in them. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, yeah, these ones are just very pointy. So let me put some batteries on this one and turn it on. So this one does take a 2032 battery. Now it's supposed to turn on as soon as you put the battery in. Again, it doesn't have an on off switch, which I find to be a little bit of an annoyance. And I don't really like 2032 battery. It's not a lot of capacity in it. You're going to have to replace these all the time. They're generally not very cheap and uh, not always available. I do like the fact that it has a metal insert though there. Does it have a backlight? It doesn't seem to. And again, it's an auto power off. So the case is not as nice as the previous two, but it does. it's nice that it does have a case. And the accessories that come with it are very limited, just the two points, which are uh, you know, of, of a different type than these ones. Okay, and uh, this very nice, it's got a very nice soft feel to it. Maybe a, little, maybe a little bit too soft. Twistable, you can't twist it to make sure that you can see it if you're looking at something a little bit off angle there. Okay, instructions seem to be a little bit better than most. It's got a, the manual is quite thick and it's in very nice readable English. Do you have any other languages? No. So, yeah. Here is an Aining GN701. This one was $21.60. Okay. Comes with a screwdriver. I guess that's to put batteries in. Comes with a spare set of tips. This is very, very close. Very, very weak spring to it. That's a pretty small distance there. 
Okay, and what kind of battery does it take? Okay, this is another one. Looks like it takes a CR2032. Very, very similar to the Mastec. It's uh, pretty identical. So these two should perform pretty much the same, one would think. 3,000 counts. I think most of them are something around that. User's manual. It's in English and you get one in Chinese. Got quite a bit to say. Anyway, one thing I don't like is that there's no storage for these extra tips and for the little screwdriver. So they could go missing very quickly and easily. Next contestant is the Holt Peak BT990C. This one is the cheapest of the lot. It's $16.32 US when I bought it. It comes with a box. Looks like it comes with a set of leads too. Very similar to the UNIT in the way the leads attach on as well. Let's see. User's manual. Very brief little manual, but it is in English. The writing's a little bit smaller than some of the other ones, so it may have as much information on it. These leads are definitely not as nice as the ones that came with the UNIT, which were actually, the leads themselves weren't too bad, and these are very short. And I imagine this one here takes AAA batteries. Yes, it does. Let's pop some batteries in it. And uh, just like the UNIT, it's got a range switch for different things like voltage, LEDs, and zeners. And it's got a 25.62 volt test voltage. That's good. And then resistance and capacitance and so forth down here. And it does have uh, two sets, which are both the same profile, both the same tip. Got a rail switch, no backlight, and it's auto power off. Max input 36 volts DC or AC. It looks big and chunky, but it's not It's not that heavy. It's not that heavy. The lightest ones, of course, are the Zoe and the Snackle, or Snackle, or however you say that. Snake oil. Yeah, so this is the second one with a set of uh, probes. Tell me what you think of that, having the leaded probes. I think it's a good idea, but I just don't like the way they, they hook on. All right, the last contender here is a Fernisi LCR ST1. What is that for? A little metal plate. Well, it might be in the instructions. It's got the Fernisi quality seal. This one comes with a set of bent tips. Frequently asked questions in several different languages. And a manual, uh, probably in several different languages too, yeah. It looks like it, it supports uh, wireless charging, but it also has the USB-C port, but, but no, no charging cable. Odd. Uh, does it have enough power to turn it on? It does. Again, it doesn't need a backlight. Let's go over to English. It's got a, a much nicer feel to it. And it's got these little grips down here. This actually is the nicest one for the feel of it. It's fairly wide, spacing at the bottom here. These tips in particular, I don't know if you can see it or not, but they've got little serrations on them. The tips are uh, removable with a finger. And the display is quite legible, but it does not have a, I can't turn it. The UNI-T had the ability to turn it if you're facing away from you. And it can be turned off, which is a, a nice feature. And uh, this just selects through different ranges and things. Yeah, brilliant. I kind of like this one the best so far, especially the feel of it. Yeah, that, it just feels right. The only thing that's really lacking is the ability to turn the display. So that's it, folks. Th these are the contenders. I'm going to have a look at them and fill out some of the other information I'm going to put down along here. And I'd really appreciate it if you guys have some idea of the kind of information you'd like to, to see and give me some ideas what I might be able to do here. Some of them, as you can see, have very limited readable documentation, so I may not be able to get things like the number of accounts and stuff like that off them. But I'll try and determine that from the display when we, we turn them on. I'm going to try and have the power supply finished off in the next video. Uh, then we'll get on to the second part of this series. I don't know if we'll have a third video to be able to decide which of these is the best deal. All right, thanks very much for coming out. See you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.